from Perth in Western Australia, welcome to the GCN show. From the world's first live Everesting, you're watching the GCN show. From the Pacific Northwest, welcome to the GCN show. <laughs> Welcome to the GCN Show. The question that we are asking ourselves this week is, are weekend warriors the healthiest cyclists? Plus, we announced the two very lucky winners of that complete indoor Zwift training setup. Wattage Bazooka returns for the new racing season. Sai has got some very, very exciting new tech from Spain, where it's not quite as warm as it was no, when we were there. poor Sai. And we've got all of your usual favorites, of course. Are weekend warriors as healthy as regular cyclists? A study published recently has found that the typical weekend warrior activity pattern, i.e. those people who have busy lives, busy jobs, and need to cram all of their cycling or all of their exercise into the weekend, may be sufficient to reduce all of the health risks associated with not exercising. Yeah, so we're talking about those really nasty things such as cardiovascular disease or cancers. So the interesting thing from this study is they're finding that those people that have that weekend warrior style exercise pattern, which as you say last year, is defined as one to two bouts of exercise per week, reduce their health risk by just as much or almost as much as regular exercisers who do four to five bouts of exercise per week. Interestingly, Dan, making us, if not quite as fast as Sai, perhaps just as healthy. Yeah, well you'd hope so. So we might not be able to drop sign next time we are out on the bikes, but we might, all things being equal, live as long as he does. So what does this mean for us as cyclists? Well, in an interview with The Guardian newspaper, the lead researcher Gary O'Donovan said this, millions of people are enjoying exercise once or twice a week, but they might be concerned that they're not doing more, but we have found a clear benefit. They are getting fitter and healthier. Now you're gonna have to bear with me on this one because on the face of it, the fact that if you exercise a little more, you get fitter and healthier probably isn't news. But I think there is really good news for all of us here. And that's because it means no more guilt. If you have a busy week and you can only ride your bike once or twice a week, if you always have busy weeks and you can only ride your bikes at weekends, you're still going to be achieving your health goals through cycling. And sure, you might not be able to drop your mates on a climb, you might not be able to out sprint them because they're training more. But if one of your aspirations from cycling is to be a healthier human being, you are going to achieve that. Exactly. Now we would like to hear how much you ride your bike each week and you can let us know in the comments section down below. It's now time for Cycling Shorts. Let's start off Cycling Shorts with the results from last week's poll on the GCN show. Uh, we took a look at Peter Sagan's brand new gold wheels and we want to know whether you think they are hot or not. Adam Blythe, of course, deemed them hot. I agreed with him out of purely safety reasons, while Sai did admit that he didn't actually like them very much. Controversial choice from Sai there, gotta say. Anyway, what we really wanted to know was what you, our lovely viewers, thought. And an overwhelming 70% of you thought that Peter Scan's wheels weren't just hot, they were fire. Wow, thousands of you voted as well, so thanks very much for your opinions. Sticking with pro riders, Naira Quintana has finally confirmed that he will be attempting the Giro d'Italia Tour de France double in 2017. So that race is a must watch in May this year, given that they've attracted so many star riders uh, already. It will be interesting to see how it affects his form at the Tour de France, but don't forget last year, he won the Vuelta, having already completed the Tour de France just a few weeks previous. So maybe it's good for him. Also in attendance at this year's Giro are the four wildcard teams, Bardiani CSF, CCC, Sprandi Polkovitsi, Gazprom Rasvelo and Willia Triestina. Now, great news for them, they are the four wildcard teams invited by race organisers RCS, but it has caused a bit of a stir in Italy where two Italian professional continental teams, don't forget Italy no longer has a team at the very top level of pro cycling, have been left out. They are Androni and Nippo Vini Fantini. 
as it's the 100th edition of the Giro d'Italia, they are particularly disgruntled. Yeah, you can see why they are somewhat disappointed, but this is a race which is becoming increasingly international, so I'm sure that RCS Sport had their reasons for inviting those particular four teams. OK, on to something slightly different now. You might remember a couple of weeks ago, we put up an Instagram post during a G10 show from Tom Bonin, where he put a picture of his specialised Venge Vias disc and described it as the best bike he had ever ridden. Well, he is about to start his 2017 season down in Argentina, and he has confirmed to the media there that he will indeed be racing discs all the way through the Spring Classics in his last season as a professional. Now, Tom Bone is one of the most experienced riders in the world of pro cycling, and that makes this particularly interesting because it's the experienced riders who tend to be the most reluctant to try out new bike technology. But in the latest quote, he says that disc brakes are the biggest advance in bike technology in his career. Career. High praise indeed, and we want you to vote, so click on the poll up there and let us know if you think Tom Bonin on disc brakes in the Spring Classics is hot or not. Meanwhile, away from the searing heat in Argentina and Australia, the pro cyclists who haven't started their race season yet are generally training in southern Spain or Mallorca, where the weather has changed somewhat yeah. since we were there. It's now snowing. Check out this picture from Team Sky. We definitely chose the right week last year, didn't we? Whilst yes, we did. Sai didn't. Sorry, Sai. Anyway, those conditions look more suited to cyclocross, which is a lovely segue into the fact that this coming weekend is the World Cyclocross Championships, one of our favourite weekends of the year, if not the favourite, if we're talking about Mr. Last year, who, as you can see, is particularly excited. And now this year it takes place in Luxembourg, which means that the riders there aren't going to be particularly familiar with the course, which is great because it's also a very open affair in 2017. Yeah, so men's reigning world champion Wout van Aert actually missed the final round of the World Cup due to injury. Usual other favourite, Mathieu van der Poel, was not really there in the race no. and finished mid-twenties. And could this mean that it is the best career opportunity for a rider like Kevin Powles, Tom Mason or Lars van der Haar to actually go there and take the rainbow jersey. Definitely, that's going to be very interesting, as is the women's. And I have to say that Mariana Voss is a woman on form right now, and it's taken a very brave person to bet against a Mariana Voss on form. But it looks like her closest competition might come from within her own team of the Netherlands, including, of course, Sophie de Boer. Who just won the World Cup overall. Anyway, let us know your predictions for the race down in the comments. And if you're going to be there, let us know too. We'd love to hear from you. Now, we're going to finish cycling shorts this week with some very sad news indeed. Just coming in from Sportza in Belgium is the news that former under-23 world champion Dimitro Grabowski has died at the very tender age of 31 through a heart attack. So our condolences go out to all of his friends and family. Competition time now, and this is a nervous moment for many of you because you have been asking this question since around 12 hours after we opened the competition, but it's time to announce the winners of our Ultimate Zwift Setup competition. Yeah, a huge amount of interest in this one, not a surprise really, because these are some amazing prizes. So the winner of the Ultimate Indoor Zwift Setup, including a flat screen TV, is... Dawn Parker. And the winner of the flexible Zwift indoor training setup, including an iPad, is Ruben Oosting. So very well done to both of you. We will be in touch and those prizes will be winging their way to you very shortly indeed. And we know that is going to leave many of you disappointed. But don't worry, because we've got another competition running this week where you could win a Rota Twin Power Power Meter with Q-Rings. Nice. For Tech of the Week, this time around, we are going to hand over to Mr. Cy Richardson, who is no doubt pleased at the break he's getting from the snow in the UK, doing stuff on graphene, and he's headed out to Spain. Cy, how's the weather over there? Well, you know what, guys? It's actually not that bad, although just the last couple of days we've had an entire year's worth of rain, so I'm told. But uh, anyway, the, the forecast is looking up. But it is going to be an exciting few days. I'm joined by Dave Lawrence, who's the uh, North American product manager for Shimano, because although there is loads of amazing tech here, there's one thing that is particularly newsworthy, and that is the new eTube app, which is launching next month. Is that right? That is correct. OK, and basically what it allows you to do is wirelessly connect to your DI2 and then customise the way it shifts. Is that fair to say? Yes. OK, so talk us through it then, Dave. What exactly can we do to new Dura-Ace DI2? OK, so what we can do now is, in the past, you had to physically connect the bicycle to a PC. But now you'll be able to, through a new wireless unit here with our DFly technology, 
You can wirelessly connect to your iPhone, your iPad, and it would allow you to do all the functionality you did with a hardwired system before. So you can change all of your shift settings, you can change the function of the shift buttons, you can add functions to uh, shift buttons, you can change... What functions would you add? Well, it's interesting now, with the new DI2, the new Dura-Ace, we have uh, shift buttons in the, in the tops of the levers. Uh -huh. So in the past, uh, they've been able to only control um, a computer, so yeah. like a Garmin computer or things like that. Now you can actually turn it into a shift button. So now these shifters will have an additional set of shift buttons built into them, but you can program it all here. But also with the new uh, Durace Di2 that we're launching, we have something called Synchro Shift and Semi-Synchro. So those are new shift mode functions that you can set up on your bike. You can turn them on or turn them off, but then you can also customize them. And you can customize them all on the tablet. Now, in terms of its availability, it's already on the App Store, is that right? But you need the new Di2 to be able to use it, and that is coming next month? Yes, so the, the app is actually available for the tablet and the iPhone, but next month when we launch uh, the new Durace Di2, the app will also come, which will talk to the Durace Di2. So then you can do everything you need to do with the setup. But if you have current Di2, you can use the app today. To go, yeah. Well, exciting times here at the Shimano Press Camp. And uh, yeah, thanks very much for joining us, Dave. Thanks for being here. It is time now for hack forward slash bodge of the week. That's my favorite part of the show. Let me get my glasses. First up, we've got this one from Phil James, who has sent in hack slash bodge. My brother is trying to remove his seized seat post with a garden fork to Presumably, provide yeah, leverage. extra leverage. We have got a video on that, if you'd like to check it out. Well, we didn't the need fork. a garden fork, so it might be worth watching that particular video. Meanwhile, GCN fan over on Facebook, Kerry Smith, has been designing some hacks for his indoor Zwift setup, including this platform on a rocker using the suspension provided by tennis balls, which presumably makes the whole experience even better than it already is. Next up from Patrick Elliott, and this is <laughs> quite frankly astounding, amazing. This is, yeah, words fail on this. This is a, what is it? It's like, I don't know, it's a double, bike. B, double BMX but wheels, tr it, three wheels? It's yeah, a bike, but not a bike as we know it really, isn't it? I've no idea what that would help you do better than any other bike. Check out the guy's bottle cages or whatever he's got. He's got a bottle yeah, on his back. in his rear pocket. Okay, and now Cutgate Courier sent this one in. And this one, <laughs> you have to look at it. There's Something a bit weird going on with what looks like a wooden stick as a mudguard or something an like that. Ass saver. Yeah, an ass saver, wood. if you will. But then, and you reckon it's a riser handlebar? The piece de resistance is the riser handlebar for the seat post. That reminds is, me of L-shaped cranks. No real need for it. You're in exactly the same position as a straight seat post. <laughs> Might as well have got some straight handlebars. Well, it does look rather unique. Niall Horner said, "I made this out of my mum's old makeup box. Probably the best thing I've ever made." Well, thanks for the support. That does look rather nice. Yeah, now I have a GCN makeup box, you're a lucky man. Now, Dan Nahum Estelor sent in this one, which is, I've never seen something like this before, it's a double toilet roll holder using a set of handlebars. Yeah, we've seen some cycling related toilet roll holders before, but never the double bar setup that he's got going in his bathroom. I have noticed though, Dan, that it looks like there's a bit of a disconnect in the <laughs> yeah. back of the toilet. You so. might need to make another hack fairly <laughs> soon to sort out that problem. Uh, Patrick Dupont, also on Facebook, visited the Shearer's Museum in Australia recently, and he found that back in the old days, uh, the shearers used rope as tyres so that they didn't get punctures in the outback, which is rather ingenious. I'm going to deem That's that very cool. a hack. Hack, solid hack. Okay, Jonathan Sedgebeer says, well, sent this one into you, Dan, but he said, as requested, the original furniture photos attached from Vietnam. And yeah, you've got a kind of, chandelier. Is it, uh, well, we were going to, we wondered what the definition of a chandelier was, but certainly some lights hanging from the season, uh, from the ceiling, should I say, made out of frames. They look quite nice. It's pretty snazzy. Hack. Solid hack from me. And finally, Evan Mackay has sent in his very nice cyclocross bike where he has bodged a trailer with two canoes on. You've and seen bodge already, are you? Well, I'm just saying bodge because of the way it's attached. Like it's attached with what looks like some kind of red <laughs> elastic tapes type stuff. But it, it's a solid hack in principle, but I think the implementation is bodge-like, although admirable. Yeah, we do love these, as you very well know. So if you've got any more that you'd like to send our way, use the hashtag GCNHack on Twitter or Instagram, or just send us a message over on Facebook. 
Cycling legend Mariana Voss was back on top at the final round of the Cyclocross World Cup in Hogeheide in the Netherlands. She beat out compatriots Lucinda Brand and Anne-Marie Worst on her way to victory. Yeah, and in the men's race, Wout Van Aert was absent and Matthew Van Der Poel had a particularly bad day, which left a door open for a brand new winner of a World Cup race for this particular season, that being Lars van der Haag, looking very good on the run-up to the World Championships this coming weekend. He beat two teammates in the form of Muirsen and Van Kessel. Back to the road, the first World Tour event of the season took place down in South Australia. And if you didn't keep up with it via our daily race reports, say hi John. Hello. Here's the results. Richie Port took the overall victory with two stage wins. His first overall victory at the race, in fact. While well, young Australian sprinter Caleb Ewan took four stage wins, beating Peter Sagan into second place on two of those occasions. Yeah, and this is in fact the second year in succession where Australians have completely dominated their home race. This year they took all six stage victories again, and the overall, and the points classification, and the team's classification too. In fact, the last non-Australian winner of a stage there was Walter Whippet back in 2015. Wasn't he riding for an Australian team? Was yeah, like a draft pack. Now that the 2017 road season is in full swing, we thought it'd be a good time for the return of... Wattage Bazooka! <laughs> this is slightly broken as you can see, so whoever made this, if you can send us another one, that would be very gratefully received. Right, we'll start off with the pro Wattage Bazooka. Well, it's completely broken down there now. Uh, one person that this is definitely not going to go to is a certain Belgian by the name of Laurence de Vries of Astana. He was in the day-long breakaway on his own on day one of the Tour Down Under. But look at his attack. Sly. Stealthy. Naughty. Now, we are not going to give the first Wattage Bazooka of the 2017 road season to one of the obvious choices, so very sorry Caleb Ewan and Richie Port. We're going to give it to a slightly less obvious choice, but before we get there, here is an honourable mention. And Jack Bauer, who got in the break three times at the Tour Down Under, and on each of those three occasions in a sort of kind of slow wattage bazooka burner <laughs> explosion type effort, was the last man to be caught. Fair play, Jack. Yeah, and they were on consecutive days as well. But you're right, not going to hear him. Honourable mention. But the actual What is Bazooka winner in the pro ranks this week is Lars van der Haar. Not for his win at the World Cup, but for this effort that he made in training before the World Cup. Check this out. 1,460 watts, and he only weighs 59 kilograms. So that is some sprint effort. That is hugely impressive. And this week's GCN viewer wattage bazooka goes to Benjamin Winkler, who we believe may be the first person ever to Everest on Zwift. Yeah, check this out. Almost 11 hours of riding over 200 kilometers in the virtual world, so very well done to you. And if you think you are deserving of wattage bazooka or one of your cycling mates is deserving of a wattage bazooka, get their effort in using the hashtag wattage bazooka on most forms of social media. I don't think anyone's ever said wattage bazooka so many times in a short sentence, lastly. Well done. Didn't trip up once. Yet again, Dom has kind of thrown a wild card out there and chosen three Instagram posts for us in three tweets of the week. Yeah, we're definitely going to have to rename this at some point. The first of those Instagram posts comes from Quick Step Flooring rider Peter Seri, who's over in Argentina for the Tortoise Hat. Uh, Tortoise San Juan. San Juan. Get it there eventually. Uh, this is a picture of one of his teammates' legs. He was asking his followers who it was. Turns out it was Tom Bowden. He looks to me like he might have a pretty good season in 2017. He looks ripped. He does indeed. Next up, we've got this one from Adam Blythe89, <laughs> our hot or not kind of head judge, who said, at Caleb Ewan, your position is catching on nicely. And I don't know who the cyclist in the no, is. No, what's but... going on there? I don't know, is it like a free wheel like race? Very weird. And finally, this one from Zdenek Stibar, who was also in Spain training in the snow that we talked about earlier. He says, I did grow up in the Czech Republic. A little bit of snow in Spain will not scare me to do my training. And then he's put three sunglasses emojis. <laughs> well, it might have still been sunny. Just snow on the road. True, true. We've had great fun reading through all the comments again over the last seven days. Here are a few that really caught our attention. Uh, firstly, coming underneath last week's GCN show, Darren Green wrote in saying, Wow, you milked those cow puns. They were utterly cheesy. Moving swiftly on. <laughs> uh, Edge of Sanity underneath how to train for long climbs wrote, Were you two competing for who could do the sexiest voiceover? 
it worked. It's a compliment, isn't it? This session is going to teach your body to recover from a hard effort while still going at a decent pace. Ideally, do them on a climb, but in the event you don't have one long enough, you can do them on the flat or on an indoor trainer. I guess, but then I think John won on no, the no, back no, of the race report. bring out John's voice. Anyway, finally in comment of the week, we have got Boothy of Yik, who says, I'm currently doing a master's in nano composites. Wow. And you explain the whole video perfectly. Chapeau, guys. That is, of course, underneath Simon's amazing graphene video. That is a huge compliment to Si, isn't it? I think it's we should move swiftly on. 114 thumbs up. It's like you can hardly believe we could explain such yeah. a complicated yeah, topic. People are like, correctly. yeah, he really did explain it properly. Can't believe it. Loads of great content coming up for you on GCN over the coming week, starting on Wednesday, where we show you how to get fit in 30 minutes. Unfortunately, not quite as simple as that, but here coming up are four very potent 30 minute sessions, which if done consistently, will get you very fit indeed. Maybe in a weekend warrior style -y. Thursday, we show you the best and the worst world tour team kits for 2017. And then on Friday, it is Ask GC Anything. On Saturday, I take you through my Canyon cyclocross bike. On Sunday, we've got a John Dagan Cobb challenge and another unboxing for you. And on Monday, so maintenance video, and it's how not to maintain your bike. Mm. And on a Tuesday... From Gran Canaria, in shorts, and on flat pedals, welcome to the GCN show. We shall finish, as ever, with Extreme Corner. And once again, answering your calls for more road riding in Extreme Corner. Coming up is a death-defying descent from Cannondale rider Alberto Betiol. He's shredding. That was on the limits of grip for those tyres, surely. I haven't seen angles like that in quite some time. Very sharp angles. Mm. Right, before we finish the show, we should give a special mention to Pietro Mastia, who has been providing us with these figurines for the last year or two. And these are our latest versions in the new kit. And what I particularly like is Matt Stevens' version, because not only does he have the national championships bands here on the sleeves and on the hat, but also if you look very closely, He's using toe clips and straps, which I think is a lovely touch. It's so very thank you, Pietro. Pietro, isn't it? If you haven't already subscribed to GCN and you would like to, all you need to do is click on the GCN logo, which is on screen right now. And if it's more content that you're after, there is a link to Simon's really cool video about graphene right there. Or on the other hand, in the bottom corner, you can find our advice on training for long climbs. And if you'd like to visit the GCN shop, just click right here.